Hey, so in this video, I'm going to look at creating a game show style buzzer system um, for multiplayers to buzz in. I'm going to do this in Notch, and the main thing behind this will be the JavaScript node in Notch, but we'll get to that shortly. So, first of all, I've set up a couple of things. I've got a, two buzzers here, uh, and I'm using Open Stage Control to send my OSC messages. I'm not going to go into setting this up because there's all sorts of OSC systems you could be using, um, or you could use ArtNet or MIDI or all sorts of other triggers um, as an input. But right now for my OSC, if I just turn this on, see buzzer one, I've set the address to notch slash game slash buzz slash one, notch slash game slash buzz two, and my reset button, notch slash game slash buzz slash reset. Uh, so it's important with OSC that it is not an address that notch is already listening to because you might start affecting other things. Game and buzz, I'm pretty sure are not used anywhere in notch. Uh, so I'll clear this out, I don't need this anymore. Make sure I'm not listening so I can turn it on in notch. So. Uh, to enable OSC input under my project settings and protocols, I'll just turn on OSC. I've set it up to listen on receive on port 9001. Uh, for this, we're not actually sending anything back, so it doesn't matter too much, but make sure you do have port set up. And so now it should be listening to these buzzers, but it doesn't know what to do with them yet. So we need an OSC in node to see that value. So OSC modifier, and I'll just put the address in here, so slash notch game buzz one. Now it's not doing anything just yet, so I want to see it just to test that it's actually working. So I'll use a text renderer. Text. Value as text. I should input that straight in now. Hit play, so it's actually active. I will see something going to work when we're in play mode. And there we go. There's buzzer one. So I'll F5 to name this, and I'll call this buzz buzzer one. And I'll copy it for player two, and just change that last value to two. And if I want, I can check that one as well. So now. Buzzer 2 works as well. I'll rename that to 2. And I'm going to use the reset button, so I'll set that up now as well whilst I'm here. So I'll copy and paste again and just call this reset. Make sure I'm listening to the buzz slash reset. Pipe that in to see it's coming into notch as well. So you can see all my buttons are just sending a 0 or 1 value, so an on and an off. Um, I don't need this anymore. Those are going to be my inputs. Uh, and what I want to happen is I want these to select and display text based on what they are. So whichever one buzzes in, that's uh, what will be visible on the screen. Uh, so I'm going to create the text for that. Uh, so I'll just name this one uh, player one. Center it just so it looks a little bit pretty. Same thing for player two. Next. And so to select either one of these, I'm going to use a child select mode. Select child, sorry. And what that's going to do is based on this value, it's going to choose which connected object to display. So right now it's starting at zero and one, so you can see it's switching between the two. This is using Notch's uh, processing order, so first up top to bottom, and then left to right. So if I swap these around, you'll see they'll swap positions. Um, if they're both at the same position, then it'll go left to right. And what I actually want is I want a one and a two, but I also want it cleared. So I'll put a null in just above, just so when it's at zero, it displays nothing. Um, at one, player one, and at two, player two. And we could keep adding to this. So we could have player three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and it'll just keep going up in those numbers based on that index node. So this is what we want to control. Um, and I like to use an envelope modifier. This is kind of like a, uh, 
sort of like a null for modifiers. So you can just pass the values, but at least it's a way of holding it there. Um, there are a couple of operations. Uh, so I'll pipe that straight in. And so now I, I can control it from here rather than having to go into that. And I can always pipe in something different. This is where we'll connect it. So I'll rename this to player select. I know what that null is doing, that envelope's doing. And I'll actually do the same with the buzzers as well. So I'll drag in a couple more envelopes. That way if I need to disconnect the OSC or if I want to change it to another type of connection, I don't have to reroute each of these. I can just disconnect it from there and add another connection in. And I know what it's doing. So name the same. So what I should just name these with OSC. So I know it's still remember it's an OSC. Okay, so now we need a way of selecting which one of these comes through. And this is where it, uh, things are difficult in notch. So I can't just choose which one came in first and then let it go through. Um, I need it to be processed. And for that, we're gonna use JavaScript. I'll drag in a JavaScript node. And right now it looks very basic. You can't really see there's what's happening here. Um, so it can be quite a confusing node the first time you open it. The first thing it needs, it needs a JavaScript file. So it doesn't know what to do at all. And it's not gonna pass any values at the moment. So there's no layer. So just this little flash button here will create the file for us. I'll save it in the game buzzer in the directory where this, so you'll see it comes into my resource folder here as well. So it's already a part of the project. All right, so we've got a JavaScript file now. I'm going to edit this externally. For this, I'm using um, Sublime Text. I think it's a great little code editor. You could do this in text, text document. Um, you just need to get to that actual functionality of the JavaScript there. And there's plenty of different code editors out there that make it really easy to kind of see it and read it like this. So really basic at the moment, it's got an initialize function, which is just kind of the startup. Uh, a function update. So this is the main part. This is where the code will run as Notch is running. So whenever Notch is running, it's running this little section of code you may have in here. And function on key press, so we're not gonna use this one at the moment. We're gonna use just this function update. <clears throat> There's a couple of things we need first. So right now it has no inputs or outputs. And for that, we need to create uh, variables. So we'll just create some variables. Uh, and these need to be the unique names and not reference anything else in JavaScript. So uh, I'll call the first one buzz in one buzz in two and buzz out. So you can see uh, you can declare multiples at the same time just by using a comma to separate and I'll close that off with a semicolon. And so right now it's still not doing anything but I can put some really basic code in here uh, so just to make sure it's working. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, I want it to output. So I wanna set buzz out to equal buzz in one plus buzz in two. And before I check, I need to declare these as well. So right now in my JavaScript in Notch, I need to create those same variables as inputs and outputs on the JavaScript node. So add a global input and I'll rename this exactly the same. So buzz in one. So to make sure the name that matches exactly what you called it, because that's how they link up. So same thing for the buzz in two. And then the output is a different one. So you add global output, buzz out. All right, so I've saved this. Save that. I'll reload it in Notch. You can see now it's actually taking those values and updating the buzz out. And if I bring up two, because I've done added together, so all the way up, one plus one is two, and take them out. So I can see that my JavaScript's working. That's a quick way to test. Now what I wanna do is I wanna take the buzzer information in. So buzzer one, I want it to send to buzz one. I'll just drag it straight on. Same for two. 
So there we go, we've got one and two working. You can see they're coming in through OSC. But right now it's not doing anything. Um, it's just updating that buzz out there. We want it to switch to one or two based on which one we've clicked. So we're gonna change that JavaScript code in here. So I'll delete what we had. We know it's working and we'll start with a new statement. So we wanted to use a conditional statement. So if buzzer one's pressed, do this. If buzzer two is pressed, do this. So very simple. Um, and you can look up online if you don't know much JavaScript, there's plenty of resources out there and it's very easy to pick up once you start learning and you don't need to know a lot to get some stuff happening. So if, and then in brackets, this is my statement. So if buzz in one is greater than zero, which means it's been pressed, then this is the code we want to do. We want to tell buzz out to equal one. We want to run this as an else if. So if, if that hasn't happened, we want to check something else. So else if buzz two, buzz in two has been pressed or is greater than zero. Then make buzz out. equal two. All right, so if I save that, reload it. One, two, you can see them changing. We can now pipe this straight in and actually it won't work straight into one. It's not gonna do like, because it doesn't know, we can have multiple outputs. So we have all sorts of things. JavaScript handle a lot of more information. So it needs something else to choose which one we're talking to. And for that, we use an extractor node. So if I plug that in now, once it's plugged in, um, this source envelope will have an option of all the information from that previous node. And all I want is buzz out. And now I can plug that straight into the player select. And now we have one and two. So in the JavaScript, just gonna keep checking that and this just keeps rolling through. So an interesting thing about this is normally in JavaScript, you'd have to create some sort of for loop or something to kind of keep checking things and looking for changes. But because it's running a function update, it's kind of running every time a notch cooks a frame, I believe. So you don't need to kind of create any complex loops. It'll just keep checking that same condition. Uh, what we also want is we wanna reset. So we wanna clear out who's played. So for that, we'll create a new variable. We wanna bring in the um, buzz reset. And that will be the button that sets it back to zero. So after we've checked for buzzer two, um, I'm gonna keep this outside of that same loop. It's a different state, I'm just gonna check it separately. So if buzz reset is greater than zero, then buzz out will equal zero. We haven't done, so we've declared the buzz reset here. We need to do the same thing. So we need to add the variable as a input in that JavaScript node. So again, add global input. This one is buzz reset. And now I can plug in that buzz reset. Now if I run it, so buzzer one, buzzer two, and reset clears them out and selects that null. So one, two, and there we go. All right, so that's working. Uh, what's not happening is these can just keep buzzing away. So it's whoever pressed last. And for a real game show, Whoever presses first needs to be the, the buzzer and then it should lock out everyone else. And so we need a bit more code to do that. So back in JavaScript, um, we're gonna create kind of a lockout function. So we're gonna create another variable. This is gonna exist just inside JavaScript, so we don't want it um, controlled from notch. It's gonna be controlled from the JavaScript code itself. And the whole thing with variables is anything that's a variable can be changed. So we'll create a new variable, uh, we'll call this buzz active. And we'll use this as kind of a switch to switch on whether or not people can buzz in. And so we'll create a whole new if statement above our buzzer check called if buzz active. And we'll use that as a switch. So zero will be off and one will be on. And when it is on, it's checking the buzzers. So if it's greater than zero, then we can do all of our buzzer code um, ending there. And what we want to happen is 
once we have hit a buzzer, we want it to turn off that buzzer active. So under each one, um, buzz active equals zero. And so if buzzer one gets hit, it'll turn on buzz out one and it'll turn off the buzz active, which means it'll stop listening for other changes. And I'll do the same with buzzer two. So once they've set, they're gonna turn off that buzzer. Uh, what we then need is we need a way to turn the buzzer listener back on. Um, and that's why we've separated the buzz out outside of that statement. So it can keep running even though the buzzer is not listening. And we'll use that to set it back to buzz active to equal one. So now what's happening is we're listening for the buzzer's inputs. Once we've got one, we then stop listening and we're gonna continue to stop listening until the reset button's hit and it says we can check the buzzers again. So we'll save that back in our notch. I don't need to have this one here because this variable is not an input or output that notch needs to know about. So I don't need to declare it this time here. I will reload that JavaScript and make sure I've selected it here and if we're running. So right now, because it's defaulted at zero, it's not doing anything. Once I reset, there's my buzzers. And now I can keep trying, but nothing's happening until I hit reset again. Buzzer two, no one can buzz in anymore and reset. So that's a quick intro to the JavaScript node in Notch. Um, I'll make this project available if you want to download. There's not much going on, um, but if you want to pull it apart and have a look on your own, hopefully that helps you get started with some of your projects. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments below. Thanks.